Uh, so my name is Hua Ming Chen. I come from Red Hat's Office of CTO, Emerging Technologies. I'm working on the sustainability at the moment. Uh, if you have met me before, I used to work on the Kubernetes 6 storage. Um, uh, which is uh, exciting is that um, uh, I want to also create some physics here, um, not to create the new functions, but the uh, EMC cube is what we call for the visions of uh, sustainability as a Red Hat's uh, emerging technologies. Uh, for the M, we are using the matrix. Uh, specifically, that's what we're going to talk in this uh, uh, project, Kepler. So when you have the metric about how much energy consumed by your workloads, that is very powerful information that you can use uh, in your configurations, in your scheduling, and in your reporting. So once um, that information becomes available, uh, the metrics information becomes available, we want to use it in workload scheduling. So one of the tricks, we, uh, one of the theories that um, when you use your servers as the certain capacity and a certain utilization, the power per watts, the performance per watts is the optimal. Meaning that if you want to wrap up your Kubernetes clusters to 70%, for example, the CPU utilization, you probably get the best power per performance per watts uh, curve. And we can use that information in your, in your scheduler to make a smart scheduling. And we are trying to use those projects called PIX to investigate those potentials. Um, you know, the projects are going back and forth, but uh, we finally settled to using the existing Kubernetes plugins called Tamron so that we can configure the servers to certain capacity and using Kepler metrics to advise the scheduler to make the scheduling such that the overall aggregate uh, cluster utilization, power utilization will be at the most optimal level. The next project is called Correction, uh, which we presented as a last year's KubeCon, is that uh, we're using the Kubernetes vertical part autoscaler, the VPA, and then you uh, coupled with Kepler metrics, the power consumption metrics from the workloads, and then we dynamically tune the CPU frequency such that the higher, as you, this is also has the background, the higher the CPU frequency, the higher energy it consumes, the lower the frequency and the uh, less power. But in order to maintain the same level of uh, quality of service, we set up the objective. Uh, the objectives in using the clever is called um, uh, instruction per cycle. So the amount of CPU cycles that is to run your workloads will deterministically determine the quality of service that you will receive. In the same manner, if we are giving you more resources, then potentially you are using more to your power your application the less resources, then you are going to have a less res uh, more constraints to run your application. So as the higher CPU frequency, if you are maintaining the same level of uh, IPC, we give you less, less resource, right? So in the same way, just keep the mind working. The, more hi the higher CPU frequency, the less resource. That means that the, the, uh, the amount of energy consumed will still be reduced because you are using less frequency, less resources, even you are using, running at high frequency. S uh, vice versa, if you are running at lower frequency, we give you more resources, more CPU cycles. So the IPC will be maintained, but your energy consumption will be uh, optimized in that way. So all this happens uh, in the magical, uh, all these magical things happen in the behind the scenes in VPA and we have that experimental prototypes in our GitHub. The very last C is carbon. So at the end of the day, the sustainability comes to carbon, the amount of carbon footprints that your workloads consumes. In order to do that, we have a number of uh, initiatives happening. One is that uh, we want to visualize how much carbon you, see, you use, your workload use. That is very, that's very consistent with the same way that the people are using the, you know, the uh, utilities, you know, your uh, electronics, right? The how much carbon the, uh, your electronics consumes and how much carbon to make it have to make the electronics to produce. The same way we are using the uh, carbon accounting. The other way using carbon is that uh, when you visualize the carbon as different geographic locations, there's certain differential uh, deltas, right? Depends on time of your day, your carbon footprints from electricity grid is not the same. Surprisingly, <laughs> you are using the same electricity grid, but the carbon intensity is different. And similarly, if you are running at different locations, they are also at different um, deltas. So let's come to the uh, project Kepler. So what Kepler is about? Kepler is, uh, stands for Kubernetes Efficient Power Level Exporter. It's using the EBPF, 
as the uh, underlying in, uh, technology to collect information from your hardware, from your workloads, and then use the machine learning models in the background to calculate the energy for you. This is very diverse and highly collaborative projects uh, started by Red Hat, IBM, Intel, and a number of uh, uh, reworks and uh, many of the other community contributors. We recently donated IB, uh, the capital projects to CNCF for sandboxing, and hopefully we can have more contributions from the people around the world. So if you uh, scan the QR code here, there's websites uh, for capital, and there's a Slack channel. You're all more than welcome to join the projects. So currently, Kepler supports an, a number of uh, granularities of uh, energy consum uh, consumption. So we can uh, tell you how much energy used by your processes, your containers, your parts, and hopefully, potentially, we can also aggregate to the certain higher level APIs. We currently support CPU level, GPU level, and DRAM level energy consumption. Uh, we are hopefully, in the next release or two, we are going to support um, your networking storage and other accelerators, special accelerators. And we are also going to use the external power sources from your network switch, your certain other um, hardware using the data center. We currently support bare metal and virtual machines, meaning that you are using the same infrastructure, same metrics, and you can get energy consumption from your, uh, from your environments, regardless of where your workloads run. We are potentially going to support the encrypted, the trusted execution environments that's running your uh, encryption, uh, encrypted enclaves uh, called TEE. Um, this is one of the dashboards we built. <laughs> Uh, I'm not an artist, uh, so I just briefly explain what this uh, is about. So on the left side of the panel, on the top left side, is the carbon. So as I said, there's a different um, uh, fluctuations as during certain times of the day. We can break down the carbon consumption into different levels uh, consumed by your hardware. Um, this is a little bit small. If you are looking at the, the green side, this is the CPU package, and the, um, the yellow one is the DRAM. And the bottom one is because we are not using GPU at the moment, so you do not see any of the activities over here. This side is the power. So uh, power is uh, collected by Kepler, so we can collect as a node level, as your server level. We can also, uh, also collect it to a namespace level, and it's uh, also going to the, the, the part. But the namespace is good aggregation. Uh, you can have uh, lots of videos. If you create different namespace, create a different tenants based on your namespace, you can visualize over here. On the bottom, we translate that into the amount of carbon footprints uh, related to your workloads. Uh, so, you know, certain, this is a very small setup, by the way, so we can have better visuals. So, on certain namespace, you can have higher energy consumptions, and well, uh, you can also have the higher full carbon footprints. That is for your. Uh, so, this is one example of how you can visualize work workloads, energy, as well as your carbon. Um, so you can also create other workloads and all, uh, other dashboards based on your new requirements, and that is uh, also supporting the environment as well. <laughs> Great. Thank you.